Welcome to the Dean's List. I don't know why I look like I'm five inches shorter than you in that pick, but you were sitting down. Oh, yeah, we're we're totally the same height. Yeah, we're like the same height. I look uh, like I'm like your little boy there, and you're just taking me to Little League later in the day or something. (laughs) <laughs> it, if you're watching on youtube uh we, when we rolled that it, we have you know the picture of us together and that was actually the first time that we had met in person so it was a, i mean it was a pretty cool experience i went to the to the D- detroit for the draft and that was the first time andy and i actually met not via a zoom or a stream yard call so um it was it was a great experience it was awesome but that was on uh friday and on Friday, we started drinking roughly at 10 a.m., something around there. And then that picture was taken roughly at like 6 p.m. And we had not stopped. And it was at the bar. And Andy could, I would say, barely stand up. But he was not willing to stand up for the picture. And so I was standing over him. And that's where we got our I'm five inches taller, even though I'm really not picture. Uh, but actually, I, I love it. Every time I'm just going to be like, yeah, he, he's just he's really short. I, you know, like I feel bad for the guy. Uh. <laughs> but welcome into the Dean's List. Uh, last week, we, I believe we talked about the top five 2025 eligible running backs. And now we're going to do the same thing with the top five 2025 eligible wide receivers, which is probably a lot more interesting because i'm not sure that anyone agrees like if you ask 10 different debbie analysts that you trust or just 10 random debbie analysts whatever you want to call it and it said give me your top five debbie wide receivers right now you would probably get 10 different answers like you're you're not going to have too much overlap there and it's because there's so few proven wide receivers in the Debbie realm right now. And so I think it's going to be interesting to see how far apart Andy and I are. Now, un- unfortunately for me, I've recently put out my top five Debbie wide receivers. So Andy kind of has a leg up here because he knows my top five. I do not know his top five. So we'll we'll see what happens here if he gets crazy with it or, or not. But uh because I recently put my own top five out, why don't you start us off with your top one? And I think if if I remember correctly, it might even be a little controversial. It's a little controversial. And my number one is Ohio State wide receiver Emeka Agbuka. And the reason that I have that is because the more that I've been looking into how the NFL grades these receiver prospects, the more it seems like they are looking at this yards per route run statistic and the efficiency of the receivers. And although he took a big step back last year, a lot of that can be attributed to injuries. He had over three yards per route run in his sophomore season, which is, you know, on the same level as Luther Burden and Tet McMillan, who are my two and three. Uh, But, you know, he's, He's going to be he's going to be soaking up targets there at Ohio State this season. You know, you've got Jeremiah Smith coming in, who's probably going to see some playing time. And then after that, you've got Carnell Tate, who, you know, may be the wide receiver one there. But at the end of the day, Mecca Buka has been there longer. He knows the system. He's going to get targets. He's going to get receptions. He's going to do well. And it's kind of reminiscent. It's definitely not the same situation, but it's. You know, you're speaking on the same team. It's kind of reminiscent of what happened with Chris Olave, where he stayed another year when he certainly didn't need to. And then he came back and ended up doing well again and getting first round draft capital. And now we see what he's doing in the Saints. And he's a great dynasty wide receiver. So I still have met wide receiver one. I think it's probably a little controversial, but I think the top three, maybe top four, are kind of set in stone. Which brings me to top my my fourth, which is Evan Stewart, and he's a guy that I've been pushing down the ranks a little bit. I know he was hurt last year, but again, that yards per route run, he was above two last season, but he's going to a new offense at Oregon, new quarterback Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel loves the slot receiver. Just look at his stats last year when it comes to passing. He was targeting Drake Stoops like crazy. The slot receiver for Oregon is Tez Johnson. Tez Johnson, towards the end of the year, really turned on. 
he's going to be heavily targeted in that offense from a quarterback like Dylan Gabriel, which makes me believe that Evan Stewart's kind of going to be second fiddle in that offense, at least in the passing offense. So that's kind of why I pushed him down there a little bit. And then my fifth wide receiver, sticking with my yards per route run theory, I guess you want to call it, but is uh, Squirrel White from Tennessee, who didn't have an electric season last year. But again, 800 yards. Uh, Joe Milton was his quarterback. This year he's going to have Nico, uh, who I think is a better passer. And again, yards per route run was in the high twos, uh, maybe even three. I don't have the stats in front of me right now, but he's a guy that's consistently been over two yards per route run. And there's not a lot of other guys pass that. And that's what John was kind of talking about. You're going to get a bunch of different answers from Debbie guys, because after the top four, it's kind of a, a, the wild west out there. All right. So I, like I said, Andy has seen mine. I had not seen his top five. I did not know his top five beyond. He had told me Emeka Ibuka earlier before we got on the show was going to be his one. And so I knew that and he's my two. So I have no issues with it whatsoever. Um, in fact, Ibuka has was my one for a while, but he got hurt. I mean, we, you know, we, people like to just completely dismiss injuries and I don't, I, I like to use it as the, I, I like to use everything at my disposal, you know, as part of their prospect profile, like lad McConkey only playing, you know, a certain percentage of the snaps and having back issues, missing games, like things like that. Like, I'm not just going to dismiss it. And even though I don't think of Mecca Ibuka is, is injury prone or anything like that, he did miss a you know decent amount of games. He he was not 100% healthy in a decent amount of games this past season, and so I'm going to I'm going to take it as a part of his profile. And so I did lower him down a little bit because of that. Uh, that being said, he's still my wide receiver two in the class. I have no issues with the Ibuka. I think if he wasn't hurt last year, he would have been in the NFL right now, and we would be talking about him. He would have been at the end of the first round or something like that in this NFL draft, but he did get hurt. He had a down year. Um, the, obviously the quarterback uh, situation was not great. It's still not great, but at least he's the wide receiver one this year. And people were kind of freaking out about it. Like is Jeremiah Smith, this, this amazing recruit going to come in and just completely wipe him out. And once again, don't take too much away from a spring game, but it was the Ibuka show, you know, like he, he showed that he's still him. And, and I mean, he made some one handed catches, like amazing, amazing plays and everything without really amazing quarterback play. I think, I think he's going to have a very good year. Like he wants to be that guy. And I don't blame him. Like, you know, you're playing with MHJ, you're playing with Marvin Harrison jr. That like a player that people are, are, are saying, might be one of the best wide receiver prospects that we've ever seen, or at the very least in the past five years or whatever. I don't, I wouldn't want to be in his shadow, you know? So like come back for another year, like you said, a la like Chris Alave or whatever. And then, you know, you, you go ahead and, and, and you tear it up this year. And next thing you know, you're a first round pick next year and, and everything else. So I like that. I cannot have a Buka over my boy, Ted McMillan though, Ted Aro McMillan, Arizona, I it's just there's too many things going in Ted's favor, and it's unfair to Ibuka because he was playing with MHJ. Although I do have a teammate score in Debbie Beth, so like that, it, I do make an adjustment because he was playing with such a high end player. Um, so Ibuka gets boosted up there, but Ted doesn't need that. Like he's just everything is like we talk about how how uh like few players are actually proven in this in this draft class in the 2025 class as of right now tet is the complete opposite of, uh, of that like he is the only proven player as far as i'm concerned it, besides igbuka if if you were able to take away the uh the injury concern from last year or whatever i think he would be 100% proven as well but with tet it's like he, dude's proven he's over 4 uh ppr points per touch over a almost a 35% market share. And that was with players that just got drafted and Jacob Cohen and even Dorian Singer was there before. Like there's players that, that are very good, maybe not, you know, like 
first round picks or anything like that, but like NFL quality players on his team. And he's still putting up a 35% market share. The, the yardage is there. The, the touchdown scoring is there. Like everything is there with Tet. He has the size, he has the speed. And a lot of people wanted to hate on him because of that, like because the NFL is kind of moving away from that. But he's so damn good that I don't think you can do that. So Tet is my clear and obvious one. Then you got Igbuka. Then I have Luther Burden, but he is a clear teardrop from – actually, so the way that I have it, I have Tet in Tier 1 by himself. I have Igbuka in the top end of Tier 2. And then a full teardrop. And then I have Luther Burden as my three. And then I have Evan Stewart um, basically in the same tier as Luther Burden. And so I agree with you on those two players. I just, Burden is very LaVisca Chenault-esque for me. He is a low dot player. He got higher last year, but I mean, it was more that he was beating up on really bad teams. If you go look at his stats from last year, he he was really good in the beginning of the season when they were playing just about no one. And then in the second half of the season, or at least the, the third third of the season, he really fell off and uh, he was injured in one game. It was a pretty minor injury. I don't want to like excuse it away because of injury or anything like that. Cause he played basically all snaps except for this one game where I think he played like 60% or something like that. So uh, we're not. I'm not explaining it away because of injury, and so I'm just saying he's a low A dot player. He is not probably going to be this like really high upside player unless he's used in that Debo role or whatever in the NFL, which everyone wants to happen and it never actually happens. So I don't want to bank on that player. I don't. He's he doesn't run a full route tree. He doesn't do a lot of things that you want to see from your like stud wide receiver. And that's why he's there in my tier three, even though he is my wide receiver three, but that once again goes to how few p- proven players there are in, uh, in Debbie right now, Evan Stewart. I think Andy touched on him enough. He, he hasn't quite done. He hasn't lived up to the billing. I'll just say that. Like, I don't hate Stewart. I don't love Stewart. I'm kind of in between. He's my wide receiver four for now, but that could easily change. And then I actually have squirrel wipe as my wide receiver six in the class. Uh, So I'm right there with you. I I don't hate the pick at all. Uh, The only thing that we can really say is he's really teeny tiny. Like he's a tiny boy. Uh, There's a reason why they call him Squirrel. So uh, that, that, because his name is actually Marquise, right? Something like that. Uh, So I don't, I don't love the size, but then again, I am not a sizes, especially nowadays. Like the NFL has basically proven to us or shown us at this point that they don't care about size hardly at all. Um, and I think Xavier Worthy going in the, you know, at the end of the first round has proven that Devontae Smith, you know, like there's so many players, Tank Dell, obviously, we can talk about where I don't truly care about Squirrel White's size. I think he is getting an upgrade with Nico I, and this is going to be a pretty solid year for him. But the fifth player that I have is Alec Ayomenor out of yeah. Stanford. And I'm sorry. And so not a school that you necessarily think of for wide receivers or whatever. We've gotten a couple quarterbacks out of there. So, I mean, it's not that they never send anyone to the NFL, but it's not always wide receivers. Uh, so, you know, like not the greatest landing spot as far as the schools, but it's a, another player, almost 37% market share, uh, you know, last year. 3.2 PPR points per touch. The the yards per team pass attempt is up there. I don't get in the yards per route run as much because I feel like it's almost a cop out for a lot of players. I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all. I just don't really like care. <laughs> and then uh, the yards perception shows the the athleticism and everything. So I I, I really do think that if uh, I am an or I, I can never say his last name right, but if, if he can, if Alec um can put another season like he did this past year that he deserves to be in that fifth uh, that, that fifth spot there because he has another player that has good size has good speed has all that kind of stuff uh he tore up Travis Hunter in the game against Colorado almost 300 yards and multiple touchdowns and people think that Travis Hunter is this like amazing DB and everything so like I I don't know I don't pay attention to uh, defensive players, but I just know that 
he was once considered one of the high end or top end corners in college football, at least as a recruit. And he got absolutely destroyed by Alakai Menor. Yeah. And when you said that, it obviously got a lot of reaction from, from me, from, you know, other people in the Debbie space. But then, you know, at the end of the day, I'm looking at it and I don't think that there's a safe bet at, at wide receiver five right now. You know, I have Squirrel White there. You've got Alec A. Menor. Uh, I think a lot of people probably have Isaiah Bond, who is going over to Texas from Alabama. Um, I don't think Completely that's necessarily unproven. <laughs> right. You know, I it's it's just like you you mentioned it. The this class from a, from a wide receiver standpoint, considering where we came from this year, with how deep the wide receiver class was, it's it's kind of a 180. So we're we're kind of just playing with what we know right now we're definitely going to find out a lot more once the season starts rolling but it's hard to really predict who that fifth wide receiver is going to be and it's definitely going to change yeah i mean i'm not trying to act like uh alec or squirrel or or any of those players are like locked in or anything like that but you know it's just where i have them right now um, I, I'm hoping there's some players that will stand out and, and even maybe jump back up because there was a couple of players that I was pretty excited about that kind of had down years, whether it was via injury or or just, you know, poor quarterback play, whatever. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping some players, you know, kind of jump back into the top five when it's all said and done. And then obviously there's always going to be like the the young guy, the the, the true junior that just stands out for whatever reason and never got on the field, you know, maybe an Ohio state guy or whoever it may be. And that player is going to, you know, all of a sudden be in the top five as well. We unfortunately just have to wait and see, because as of right now, I cannot promise you who it'll be. Um, If it was, if I had to guess who it would be right now, man, I don't even have, I, I would say Kobe Prentice out of Alabama. I, I think that would be my best guess of like a player that could possibly jump into it, like that doesn't have a lot of like street cred right now. Um, he he was very efficient in a small sample, and now he's kind of the guy. J- Jermaine Burton's gone. Isaiah Bond is gone. Uh, Amari Nyblack is gone. Like oh, it's almost the Kobe Prentice show. Uh, and, and then uh, Jalen Hale got hurt, unfortunately, because he was a, a high-end recruit. He got hurt. He's out for most of the year, if not the entire season. And then Ryan Williams is a player that uh, is extremely young and was not there in the spring. And so like, I really feel like it's going to be the Kobe Prentice show when it's all said and done. Uh, but I think you have a player that we might talk about that you're uh, kind of against <laughs> on that uh, in that offense there. Yeah, I mean, he's he's in my cells at the end of the day, so uh, I might I might hold off on talking about him. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to talk about him now, but I think there is a player there that, that we will be talking about here pretty shortly. Um, but that, that's basically it for the top five wide receivers right now. It is There is a lot up in the air. I would say, do you feel extremely comfortable saying no matter what else happens, I mean, beyond like catastrophic injury, which we're never you know banking on or counting on or anything like that, barring catastrophic injury, Tep McMillan and Emeka Buka are going to be NFL studs, like drafted early, like that kind of thing. Yeah, and I would even put Luther Burden in there as a guy that I'm confident is going to get at least day two capital. Seems like probably yeah. day day one. So I would say those three are the guys that I would I would be very comfortable projecting forward to like being future NFL like starters, good players. Um, Evan Stewart. Yeah, there's almost. I, too much hype with Burden to for him not to be drafted well, regardless of how I feel about the player. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off, no. but you were talking about Evan Stewart. No, I was just going to say, like Evan Stewart, I'm I'm just not, you know, entirely sure on. I feel like things could go poorly this season uh, more easily than the other ones, whereas those three guys are locked in as wide receiver ones for their respective teams. Yeah, I agree with you. 
but we will obviously keep you abreast of uh, any updates as the season progresses and everything as we get closer to the season. Maybe we'll get new news of you know what's going on. Are there you know players standing out like things like that? Spring practices are tough, but fall practices they start getting pretty realistic. Like this is what's happening. This guy's the starter. This guy's on the field all the time. This guy's running with the ones. This guy's running with the twos, like that kind of thing. We don't always get that with with the uh, spring, just because not everyone's always there. Not everyone's always healthy. It's tough. But in the fall, we, you know, we should be able to get you some pretty good info. So obviously, make sure you're staying tuned to the Debbie University. But that is it for the dean's list. 